What do you care about? I care about the big problems facing my generation and hers. I care about protecting our planet from climate change and our rivers from single-use plastics. So there's a world worth growing up in. Don't want to end up like him. I care about everyone getting an education. Because we wouldn't be here today. Without a scholarship. I care about treating and preventing cancer like the cancer we lost beautiful Laura to. I care about young people's mental health. Because no one should have to face anxiety or depression alone. And I care about families fleeing war and violence. 
So here at the University of Birmingham, we are taking action on these five big challenges. But we need you. You can help our trees to help us all breathe easier. You can help take action on cancer to find the right treatment for every patient. You can help find treatments for anxiety and depression. You can help communities support refugee families. And you can support essential scholarships and share your expertise as a mentor. So young people like me can go to university. And me. And me. And me. So tell us which matters the most to you. It's time to take action for our generation and the next. I attended the IEP Summer School in 2017 now and it was the best week ever. I remember Ansar telling us at the beginning of the week that it was going to be the best five days and it really was. I met some people on that summer school that I ended up being best friends with for until now to this day. The ambassadors that have come on to be at university with me, we're really, really close. I had a mentor at the AEP Summer School and me and her now are still really close as well. Overall, it's just made me a much well-rounded person and just looking back on those days now on graduation day, I can't believe how long ago it was. Hi guys, my name is Neve Wilson and I'm on AEP this week. I'm on the humanities stream wanting to study psychology at Birmingham. Um, so I'm going to be doing vlogs throughout the week, so I hope you enjoy it. We can do it and we're on this program for that particular reason and if it wasn't for many of the people in this room we wouldn't have been given that opportunity. And so I'd like to thank every single one of you for giving all of us young people the chance to reach our potential and even further if we want to, if we want to be working, we can do it. On A-Level Results Day, I was ecstatic. I remember going to sixth form instead of looking on UCAS in the morning, so I didn't want to know if I got in or not. I wanted to get my results first. I remember opening the envelope with my dad, who's here on campus with me today, and it was just like that thank you moment of just all the hard work and all the all-nighters and everything paying off finally. So that was an amazing day. It's I Level Results Day and I've just collected my results. I got the grades that I needed to get into Birmingham, so I'm so excited to be starting my psychology degree in October. I just thought I'd take this opportunity to thank all the sponsors that supported the summer school that I attended last year, as it was such an amazing experience and I met some lifelong friends there. And I just want to thank you all for your support in enabling students like me to be able to attend Birmingham. The bursary actually enabled me to be able to uh, travel from here back to Bromsgrove and from Bromsgrove to here as often as I needed to in first year, uh, which was kind of essential because it was around the time at the same time that my mum was ill with the stroke. And so I was also like needed quite a lot at home. It enabled me to be able to take her shopping and take her out and do all the things that maybe my dad was struggling to do, trying to run a business and a household and stuff. So that bursary enabled me to just be there when I was needed to, whenever it was whenever what time it was it didn't matter so that was really amazing it was my uh first week in a sixth form my brand new sixth form that i just started and my mum unfortunately suffered a stroke and you kind of learn from quite a young age that the world doesn't stop just because something bad happens you know it carries on and that's where you know the a to b program kind of levels the playing field it's just bringing us back up to where we would have been if life would have given us the same opportunities as everybody else being able to have um, the freedom that the scholarship gave me when I started uni I was able to move into halls and 
I was very aware that I was going to struggle because I knew that my mum needed my support in that time. But I also really wanted to have the experience to get into uni and get in, in halls and meeting new people. And so having that scholarship gave me the ability to get like a, an annual train pass to back and forth to Bromsgrove. So it really gave me that opportunity to just be there when I needed to. So I've been a part of the mentor scheme this past year at uni and uh, my mentor Paul, unfortunately we haven't been able to meet up in person due to Covid but we've been able to have Zoom sessions every other Friday and it's given me that structure that I've really needed this year due to having online lectures it's kind of been that one thing in my diary that stays the same. It's been life coaching, it's been career talks, it's been giving me self confidence when I've been feeling a little bit down in the dumps, it's just been that thing that's really like pulled it all together and made me crack on over the weekend that coming after it it's just been perfect so I couldn't thank him enough it's been absolutely amazing. I would say a massive thank you to all of the alumni that have supported students like me without the scheme I definitely wouldn't be here I wouldn't be stood here in my robes graduating you know I've made myself really proud and I've put in the hard work but it's with the support of the alumni that's enabled me to do that so just a massive thank you really.
gives me the greatest of pleasure to declare this congregation open. Chancellor, distinguished guests, members of the university, family members, friends, and especially graduates, a very warm welcome to you on this wonderful occasion, the first degree congregation we've been able to hold in this most magnificent and majestic of settings since 2019. My name is William Bloss. I'm Deputy Head of the College of Life and Environmental Sciences. Today, we're welcoming you to graduate from a university with a long and proud story. It's a story founded on the vision of Joseph Chamberlain in 1900 to provide a university for the people of Birmingham, a great school of universal instruction, taking all knowledge in its province. This is a university that has always sought to teach, to test, to extend and apply knowledge in the broadest range of disciplines, a breadth illustrated through this very building. Outside, the friezes beneath the domes depict engineering and metallurgy and music. And behind me, the spectacular south window portrays commerce and medicine the arts and physics and more. The Great Hall itself has a remarkable story. When it was opened in 1909 by King Edward VII, it was described as the greatest glory of this, the original civic red brick university. Its story encompasses not only a hundred years of examinations and graduations and prestigious functions, but also its service as a military hospital during the First World War, as an emergency gym in the second, and most recently as a COVID testing facility. The global pandemic, of course, has impacted all our lives in ways we could never have imagined only two years ago. You have adapted, you've persevered and shown more resilience and ingenuity and tenacity than possibly any graduating cohort this hall has seen. And we're proud, proud that you've overcome all these challenges and achieved your degrees. You're extraordinary people and we're here to celebrate your achievements. You came to the University of Birmingham because you wanted to come to a great place of learning. You wanted to test yourselves to equip yourselves for the next phase of your life. Because of COVID, your experience will not have been what you were expecting, but you stand here today having overcome all barriers and having achieved your goals nonetheless. Graduation day is a day to tell stories, the individual stories of each of you the students of all ages and backgrounds and nationalities who animate this great university. And behind each of the names that we will read out today is an individual chapter written into the history of the university. But the ceremony marks a momentous occasion and also a significant chapter in your stories. It's a chapter that's been made possible through the continued support, the tireless dedication of everyone joining us in the Great Hall today. And we're delighted to welcome parents, guardians, family and friends to celebrate with us this important moment in your lives. It's right on an occasion such as this to recognise their contributions also to your success. And I'm sure each of you will want to do so in your own ways. Today marks the end of one kind of relationship with the university and the start of a new one. Today, you become members 
of a new distinguished family, a family with over 350,000 members in over 170 countries around the planet, the alumni of the University of Birmingham. Our alumni engage in an astonishing array of projects and professions, and we look forward to witnessing your own achievements and successes being added to the list in years to come. You, and those of you who are with you here today, have many reasons to be proud, and we share in that pride, and take great pleasure as the Chancellor will now admit you to your degrees. Chancellor, to you and to the university, I present the names of these graduates as listed in my programme, both in attendance and in absentia, proved worthy to be admitted to their respective degrees. By virtue of my authority as Chancellor, I admit those persons listed in the programme to the degree for which they are to be presented. College of Life and Environmental Sciences, School of Biosciences, Doctor of Philosophy. For research into the molecular mechanisms of hormone action, Rachel Lauren Grime. For research into the physiological, cellular, and molecular mechanisms underpinning bruising in parsnips, David Booth. For research into central nervous system regeneration, Elizabeth Connolly. For research into ageing process and establishing alternative models, Julia Kate Constantinou. <laughs> For research into the impact of climate change and pesticides on pollinators and commercial insect production to help sustain food security, Nicholas John Howe. Master of Research, Shimona Jahan. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Johnston. <laughs> Chloe Wellings. <laughs> Master of Science, Microbiology and Infection, Meme Uwusua Afriye. Halim Ahmed. <laughs> Manor Atlaf. <laughs> Amratpal Singh Bahra. <laughs> Muskab Bihi. <laughs> Emily Birch. Alicia Breakwell. <laughs> Gabriella Francine Cooper. <laughs> Carolina Drodz. <laughs> Neve Howes. Nuruddin Nuruddin Hussein. <laughs> J. 
Gemma Hutchinson. Caitlin May Merrick. Edward Thomas Logan Mitchell. Paulina Pavlos. Zarina Fatima Salim. Karanjot Ko Sandhu. Jessica Seymour. Chloe Louise Shaw. Frederick Henry William Slutz. Heather Summerson. Megan Taylor. Sanna Weir. Molecular Biotechnology, Aulia Cansa de la Rose. Francisco Ryan Diaz. Steffi George. Doa Hamza M. Gulam. Derek Gimia. Matthew Ukrid Hoopermans. Sotiris Camarinos. Kainat Razul. Toxicology, Ancolica Elizabeth Antuana. <laughs> Hannah Margaret Bryan. <laughs> Neoma June Katya Chuwukabike. Matthew Patrick Domhoff. <laughs> Marina Julia Fernandez de la Fuente. <laughs> Alexander James Hainsworth. <laughs> Safia Hassan. Ben Haynes. <laughs> Zara Khan. <laughs> Georgia May King. <laughs> Princess Kisi. Isabel Martin. Amy Matthews. Harry Thomas Millard. Raja HQ Shaheen. William Sinclair. <laughs> Reese Summers. <laughs> Heather Louise Thierry. <laughs> Katie Rose Wilson. Master in Science, Biological Sciences, 
Charlotte Rose Renner. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Biological Sciences, Genetics, Selene Kurt. <laughs> Human Biology, Grace Rutter. School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation Sciences, Doctor of Philosophy, for research into the physio physiological and exercise responses to heat acclimation in female and male athletes, Natalie Kirby. <laughs> for research into the mechanisms of how the brain adapts and responds to movement-related conflict, Breeze Elizabeth Amber Reed. For research into the spatial distribution of muscle activity in individuals with chronic, non-specific low back pain, Andrew Sanderson. <laughs> Master of Science, Emma Alexander. <laughs> Connor Dunleavy. Master of Science, Advanced, Advanced Manipulative Physiotherapy, Christopher Mark Cleaver. <laughs> Jeremy Chuk Hang Fung. <laughs> Benedict John Gallagher. Chancellor, every Saturday morning, women from across Birmingham head to the university sports courts to play one of the country's fastest growing sports, netball. There are 12 divisions of players comprising hundreds of women playing in teams from their neighbourhoods, their workplaces or with their friends. I know because I've been there too picking up netball again after having kids because it's such an accessible and friendly sport with a team for whatever your ability. Colette Thompson has been involved in netball for over 50 years, from the amateurs who turn up on cold mornings across the city to the very highest levels of the sport. She first represented England as a junior in 1971 and carried on while she was a student here at the University of Birmingham before moving to the senior England team in 1975. She played at that international level for 13 years, gaining 89 caps, playing in four world championships and winning a silver medal. Colette then moved into professional coaching, becoming assistant national coach for the England netball team. She coached the team, the Roses, through many of its most impressive achievements including winning gold at the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. She was part of the coaching team behind the England netballers winning the 2018 BBC Sports Personality Team of the Year and the inaugural Best Sporting Moment of the Year Award for their Gold Coast win in the dying seconds of that game. Closer to home, Colette is the leader and inspiration behind Birmingham Netball Club Linden, based in Neitchell's, consistently one of the most successful clubs in the country, securing numerous national and regional titles. At Linden, she's led the development of a thriving community provision for netball at all levels and age groups. She has a legacy of delivering sports stars of the future throughout an almost 50 year career, establishing Birmingham as a development ground for England players. But she notes that netball isn't just about foregrounding a star player, the limits on movement across the court mean that even a star can't win a game on their own. It's about the ability to build an excellent team. Colette came to Birmingham University in the early 70s as it was the only place that offered a PE degree and enabled her to combine that with maths. 
She notes that elite sports coaching now is very different than when she started. As a player and coach, Colette continued to teach high school maths and to buy her own England netball kit. We now have professional players, coaching and sponsorship. The National Super League, broadcast on Sky, has brought netball to a much wider audience. At the grassroots, netball also continues to thrive and to survive challenges such as lockdown, with lots of people saying they were glad to be back, having missed the camaraderie of doing something physical with their friends. Colette continues to be heavily involved in all levels of netball. She might be helping out with the little leagues for under 11s on one day, and then on another, as happened last October, jumping on a plane to New Zealand when one of the coaching team tested positive for COVID and the Roses needed her help. With the City of Birmingham hosting the next Commonwealth Games, at which the England netball team will be the defending champions, it's an exciting time ahead for netball. And it's a great honour to have one of its most esteemed athletes and coaches with us here today. Chancellor, to you and to the university, I present Colette Thompson, deemed worthy of admission to the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. By, by virtue of my authority as Chancellor of this university, I have the greatest pleasure to admit you to the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Many congratulations. <laughs> Chancellor, members of the university, graduates, graduands, and guests. I probably shouldn't say this, but wow. <laughs> um, firstly, I want to thank Birmingham University for this very prestigious award. It does actually feel very strange receiving something purely for doing something I loved and that has already given me so much pleasure. So this is just the icing on the cake. Congratulations today though, however, I feel must go to your incredible achievements. I'm sure when you started your journey that no one could have envisaged the journey that you would have taken. Lockdown was incredibly hard for everyone but especially, I feel, for yourselves. It has taken dedication, perseverance, and immense determination to get here today, and your achievements are a credit to you all. I came to the university in the early 70s, as it was the only university that could offer a physical education degree. I loved maths, and I wanted to follow that route, but Birmingham gave me the opportunity to increase, include physical education. The university was the pioneer in seeing the value of sport in an academic setting. And now, other institutions across the country are offering opportunities for students to follow their love of sport. Birmingham continues to lead the way in supporting athletes and performance development. I am certainly grateful for all the time that I spent here. Sport in the university was very, very different at that time and not due to a pandemic. There were no full-time coaches, and so, at the age of 19, I was forced into coaching. I had no idea what I was doing, um, and I had no idea where it would eventually lead. However, I will say that this was both the making of me as an individual, and without that, I know I would not be standing here today. Playing for England is an absolute honour. I can still remember the first time I stood for the national anthem. It's very different to when you're sitting in your seat at home. I don't think I'd ever been so nervous, apart from possibly now. Representing your country is not something I had ever dreamed of, but doing something you enjoy, working hard at it, it's amazing what can happen. Through netball, I've been lucky enough to visit many countries, including Australia, New Zealand, Singapore. How wonderful, I hear you say. I hear that all the time. However, I will say netball courts, hotel rooms, and gyms look very much the same across the globe. It's just a nicer climate. I've made long-term friends across the world and have been awarded an MBE by the Queen. None of this would, have, would not have happened but for my passion and involvement in netball. After university, 
I went into teaching mathematics, not PE, as everybody always thinks. The experiences, however, I had coaching university teams, including possibly the first ever men's team from the chemical engineering department, certainly stood me in good stead to deal with stroppy teenagers who could dislike, or should I say even hate, maths. One of the hardest parts of coaching and teaching is in the communication, and I definitely developed that during my time here. Whilst playing internationally was an enjoyable and challenging experience, it was simple in comparison to coaching at that level. When you are coaching, you have no control. You play every moment. You know what's going to happen before it happens, yet you can't stop it. You feel exhausted all the time, and yet you've done no exercise. You often take losses harder than the players, but are proud when they win. If I had known what it would be like, would I have done it? Of course I would. I've learned so much from the experience, good and bad. The one goal loss in the final seconds of the Commonwealth Games in 2014 was one of the lowest points. Unfortunately, I deem I am a perfectionist, a pretty much an impossibility when dealing with people and, of course, sport. Yet I spent a long time thinking, what if we'd done X? Should we have done Y? Why didn't I say this? The list went on. However, I recognized I needed to change my thinking. Not what should I have done or said, what do I need to do? Nothing could change that result. But what could I do and what could I say next time? The opportunity to put this into practice came in the Commonwealth Games in 2018, after a long and arduous four-year preparation. The team and I had learnt so much during those four years, and everyone was determined to not be in the same position again. England Roses had never made a final at a world event, let alone won it. We believed we were good enough, we just had to prove it. Seven down against Jamaica in the semi-final, we came back to win by one on the final whistle. We had made the final. 2014 memories banished. Back in 2005, coaching the under-21 team, we made the World Youth Club final. I can still remember the feeling on that day. Many players felt, we've won a medal. They play, they, that's enough. They played well, but in my opinion, didn't turn up. A medal was enough, the colour was irrelevant. This time, I was different. We were different. We knew it would be tough. Australia in Australia. We were four down with four minutes to go. Level with 22 seconds to go. Two missed shots. My heart was in my mouth. But we won. 52, 51. A score that will be etched on my brain forever. England were Commonwealth Games champions. We had proved we were good enough, and we did it. I got immense pleasure from playing, but it does not compare to that which I have received from coaching. Seeing players achieve their dreams, the pride that I feel knowing that I've been a small part of their success is something I cannot express. And it all started right here 40 years ago. Once again, thank you for this award, which I will treasure. And I congratulate each and every one of you on your achievements. And if you have half the enjoyment that I've had, you'll have a great life. Thank you.
Chancellor, to you and to the university, I present the names of these graduates as listed in my program, both in attendance and in absentia, proved worthy to be admitted to their respective degrees. Master of Science, Advanced Manipulative Physiotherapy, Simon Andrew Leonard Roberts. Advancing Physiotherapy Practice, Bethany Jones. <laughs> Exercise and Sports Medicine Football, Bagashuri Deuka. <laughs> Physical Education and Sport Pedagogy, Cheyenne Farelli Trainer. Tanya Michelle Sharon Pearson. <laughs> Physical Education and Wellbeing, Lucy Macy. <laughs> Helen Mockler. <laughs> Physiotherapy Pre Registration, Molly Adams. Catherine Grace Barnes. <laughs> Emma Wilkie Bissonette. <laughs> Jessica Bradshaw. <laughs> Michael Broadbury. Liam Robert Brown. <laughs> Matthew Chapel. <laughs> David Wilkinson Cleeton. <laughs> Annie Cooper. <laughs> Eloise Cresswell. Hannah Elizabeth Croft. <laughs> Sean Daly. <laughs> Isabel Davis. <laughs> Ema Donnellan. <laughs> Chantelle Kimberly Drury. Abigail Edmonds. <laughs> Catherine Evans. <laughs> Sajni Vimul Galea. <laughs> ben Healy. <laughs> William Henshaw. Emma Hill. Claire Isla Susan Hulton. Elena Hume. Amy Humphreys. Gemma Courtney Hunter. Zoe Jackson. Claire Jones. Jamie Lynn Kavanagh. Annette Quakey. Hannah Lloyd.
Nicholas Master. Charlotte Lucy Morris. Bilal Mohammed. Hayley Perrin. George Sean Powell. Olivia Sammy. Jaskaran Kaur Sangra. Joshua Santa. Michelle Chloe Saunders. Christian Alexander Shook. Millie Shaw. Philippa Elizabeth Taylor. Nithin John Thankachan. Lok Yin Tin. Samuel Travel. Lowry Marie Walker. Emily Charlotte Wenzel. Laura Natalie Whitehead. Sport Coaching, Katya Maria Hashkei Shevsky. David Lawrence. Elena Alexandra Nareskevsky. Bachelor of Science, Physiotherapy, Chi Tao Lam. Annie Megan Sparks. Sport and Exercise Sciences, Sarah Margaret Elizabeth McGregor Bendel. Laura Ann Lloyd. Laura McTurnan. Tom Smart. Jessica Telford. Imogen Grace Woodard. Sport, physical, physical education and coaching science. William Adderley. Caitlin Brown. Oscar Clayton. Laura Zialor. College of Social Sciences, Birmingham Business School, Master of Science, Economics, Muhammad Abdi. <laughs> Financial Management, Wan Chin Chang. Kimberly Arizima Desande. Ming Huan Li. Money, Banking and Finance. Kexi Liu. Yitong Wang. Liki Yin.
Investments, Minghua Wan. Xingzhao Zhang. Economics, Ibrahim Kamara. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Economics, Patricia Georgina Momo. <laughs> College of Environmental, Life and Environmental Sciences, School of Biosciences, Master of Science, Toxicology, Matthew Paul Symington. Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry, Harriet Mercer. <laughs> School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation Sciences, Master of Science, Exercise and Sports Medicine, Football, Patrick Nylander Anderson. <laughs> Physiotherapy, Pre-Registration, Daniel Okere Darko Asumadu. Mark Anthony Cornez. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Sport and Exercise Sciences, Tanika Small Oni. <laughs> I would like to now to introduce um, our student representative to give a speech on behalf of the graduating cohort, just graduated uh, himself, in fact, uh, from the MSc Microbiology and Infection, Amratpal Singh Bahra. A warm welcome to everyone who's here students, their families, the staff, the university chancellor, and the organizing team members. It's great to have everyone joining us for such a great occasion. We all know how hard it's been over the past year, and today is a great day to celebrate. I'm grateful to be speaking on behalf of the graduating cohort to express our thoughts, gratitude, and appreciation for our time here at Birmingham. I don't have to say it, but as we know, it's been a strange year. But this does give us time to reflect and give us time to look back and see how far we've come. A quote which we may all resonate with is, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. And that is by one of the founding fathers of Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius. Reflecting on that, we can take time to adapt and overcome our obstacles, and we've had many throughout our journey here. But reflecting on our achievements, we can look back with a smile. For if events were different, would we be here? And for this, we are thankful to everyone. Thankful to us, the support from the staff, our families, and the friends we've made along the way. We'd like to personally express gratitude to certain members of staff whose support and guidance has helped us along the way namely a few individuals, Professor Busby and Dr. Bat. Your support stood out and helped us a lot over the past year. We are grateful for our experience here, and we thank the University of Birmingham for the opportunity that has been provided. It's been a great time here, and as I said, it's been a strange year. And even with mistakes we made along the way, and uh, believe me, there's been many, We'll find strength in going forward and continue to learn and be greater for the future. We're at a stage where we're entering careers and new education, and I'm sure wherever we go, we'll be doing something great for the world ahead. And I can be sure by saying that, that we all have a bright future ahead. Thank you for listening.
You start off as a graduate. You are now graduates. Many congratulations to our graduates. And uh, as our wonderful speaker just graduated, Amrath Pal Singh Bhara, in his excellent speech, he thanked his, his family and friends and the staff. And you've done this through your hard work. The motto of our university, Per Adwa Ad Alta, there's no shortcut to the hard work. So credit goes to you. But you couldn't have done it on your own. You've only done it because of the support of your friends, of your family. I tell you, if you can just see what I'm seeing, the pride in their faces, the emotion that they feel, the emotion I felt when I saw my older son graduate. If you feel proud, they're feeling even prouder. You wouldn't have done it without them. And also, you wouldn't have done it without the wonderful staff and faculty who've taught you. So I'd like the graduates to stand up and thank their family and the staff, their teachers. So please stand up and let's give them a huge Thank you. Thank you. Please, please be seated. Uh, this is a phenomenal occasion, and, and I mentioned uh, Amrat Pal Singh Bara earlier, who's graduated in microbiology and infection. I mean, what more relevant subject can you graduate in than that subject? I saw the Dimbleby lecture, Professor Gilbert. What a story. She started off microbiology. The person I developed Cobra Beer with did a PhD in microbiochemistry. Sarah Gilbert worked in brewing as well, founded my brand Cobra Beer. So congratulations to you, and I think a huge round of applause for Amrapal for his excellent speech. And you know, in his speech, he said something. He said, we have all made mistakes. And one of my favorite sayings is, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. There is no shortcut to making the mistakes and learning from them and going forward. Uh, many congratulations uh, to our wonderful honorary graduate, to Colette Thompson. And how I mean, we, we, we are very privileged to be able to award uh, honorary degrees. They are on very few and far between. And they're given to very distinguished people. And it's all the more special when it is one of our own, an alumna of our university. And her achievements, I mean, she's reached the very top of her field, of netball, of her, of her sport. And the University of Birmingham, many of you may not know this, is one of the highest ranked universities in sports, not just in the UK, but in the whole world. If you haven't seen it, our wonderful new sports center, I was privileged to be there for the opening when Her Royal Highness Princess Anne came to open it, the most state-of-the-art sports center you can find anywhere in the world. And what came across um, from Colette's speech was how she said I was doing something I love. And my advice, I'm meant to give you advice as Chancellor, follow your passion, not your pension. <laughs> Don't embark on a career unless you're going to love it. I love what I do. I love my business, Cobra Beer. I love being Chancellor of here, uh, of this fantastic university. I love being a member of the House of Lords. I've been there for 15 and a half years, and when I was appointed, I was one of the three youngest, and I'm still one of the younger members of the House of Lords. <laughs> Our average age is 70. Um, and I love being president of the Confederation of British Industry, a role that I hold with the CBI 
at the moment. So that came across, your passion, um, your passion netball, your determination, your perseverance, the fact you're a perfectionist, and that wonderful 52-51 win at the last Commonwealth Games. What an achievement. And how wonderful that the next Commonwealth Games are going to be right here in Birmingham next year in the Queen's Platinum Jubilee year. And we at the university, the Athletes Village is here on our campus. We're going to be hosting squash. We're going to be hosting hockey. We're going to be at the heart of the Commonwealth Games. And the baton relay that is going around the world, and I was there for the launch by Her Majesty at Buckingham Palace, it is around the world. All, not just the 54 Commonwealth countries, the 72 Commonwealth countries and territories. It's going around the world, coming back here for the Games in July. And I'll be in India with that baton in Delhi and in Hyderabad next month travel permitting, of course. Um, you can be proud you're leaving this university, um, one of the finest universities in this country without exaggeration. We're a Russell Group University. We're always ranked one of the top in the country. We are one of the top 100 in the world. And you are graduating from a British university. And a British university is, along with America, the best universities in the world by far. You've been through an awful time. You are graduates who will be remembered in history, those who've studied to these last almost two years, coming up to two years. What you've been through is extraordinary. And you will look back on this and say, in spite of everything, I did it. Some people fail because of, other people succeed in spite of. And in spite of everything that's been thrown at you, you succeeded. And I my, my literally, literally hats off to you. And I was sent a, a note at the beginning of the pandemic in March from a professor who taught me at business school. And he said, uh, here's some advice, the seven C's of dealing with a crisis. You need calm, compassion, you need community, communication, confidence, collaboration, and cash. Of course, this government has been fantastic in giving us 400 billion pounds to rescue the businesses and save the jobs, one of the highest in the world in per capita or absolute terms. So you've done it. As Winston Churchill said, when you're going through hell, keep going. And you've kept going, and here you are, graduates of this wonderful university. Always be proud of Birmingham. You walk down that corridor outside the vice chancellor's office, you'll see the 11 Nobel Prize winners. In sport, last Olympic Games, most Olympic Games, we have Olympic gold medal winners who are not just alumni of the university, quite often they're still studying at the university when they're getting those medals. And by the way, you're walking out of that door, out of this great hall, but I'm sorry, you're never leaving. This is Hotel California. You can check out any time you want, but you can never leave. And I mean it seriously, because you are forever members of the Birmingham family. 300,000 alumni, there are only two or three countries in the world that don't have a Birmingham alumnus or alumna present. You will find Birmingham alumni everywhere you go in the world. If you are graduating from an American university, and when I became an alumnus of a university on the other side of the pond, the next day I received an email asking me for money. We're a little more refined than that. We're not so blunt, but do give. Do give. And I, when I say give, I don't mean just money. Fortunately, most of you are going to be very successful. In all the rankings of employment, our university is almost one of the top in the country of people getting a job after they graduate. So if you haven't got a job, you'll get a job. But you will be leaders. You will do well. Give back. Give back in money. Give back in time. Give back in mentoring. Give back in charitable activity. All that we've got around here. 120-year-old university. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir David Eastwood, one of the most famous, respected Vice Chancellors in this country, quite frankly, in the world. He's retiring after 12 and a half years. In his 12 and a half year tenure, we've invested one billion pounds on this campus. This campus was donated to us by the Calthorpe family, almost 300 acres of the best land in Birmingham, the most beautiful part of Birmingham donated through benefaction. Joseph Chamberlain, old Joe the Tower there, one of great philanthropists, entrepreneur, politician, he founded this university. So it's benefaction that we all benefit from. So please, never forget the benefaction. And when you can, the Birmingham Action Program, take part in that program. So finally, my final bit of advice to you is this. 
I founded my brand of beer, Cobra Beer, three decades ago. I've nearly lost my business three times. There is one word that sums up entrepreneurs. It's the word guts. You need guts to do it in the first place, to take that risk, to give up that opportunity or the job that you have and do it. More important than that, it takes guts to stick with it when others would give up. And you've stuck with it through this horrible time. You've never give up, never, ever give up. I want to congratulate those who got doctorates today, by the way. We are 1% of the world's population in the UK and 16% of the world's leading research papers. And our doctorates, students who are now doctors, PhDs, are a demonstration of that. So a round of applause for our doctoral students. I came here as a 19-year-old student from India to study in this country. My mother graduated in the 1950s from this university. My grandfather, her father, graduated in 1931 from this university. My uncle, my mother's brother, did his PhD at this university. I graduated from British University. My children have graduated from studying at British universities. This is a generation-long thing. There are many international students who walked up here and collected their degrees today. Thank you for the nearly 30 billion pounds you bring to this economy. But much more importantly, thank you for what you bring to enrich the experience of all our students, to enrich our universities, to be lifelong ambassadors for Birmingham and for Britain. We really value it. So a round of applause for the international students. Um, I chair the Memorial Gates next to Buckingham Palace near Hyde Park Corner in London. These gates were inaugurated by Her Majesty the Queen in 2002 to commemorate the service and sacrifice of the five million who served in World War I and II from South Asia, Africa and the Caribbean. Without their service and sacrifice, we wouldn't have the freedoms we have today. And Ben Oakley, the famous poet and author, um, there's an inscription from him on one of the pillars of the gates, and it says that our future is greater than our past. So let's look ahead to our future. We've been through a horrible time. Let's look ahead to a great future. And Colette said in her speech, she said, I've learned so much. So your learning doesn't stop when you walk out of here. It carries on. And my younger son, when I was dropping him to school one day, turned around and said, Dad, you've got to live as if you're going to die tomorrow. What are you saying, Josh? And Dad, you've got to learn as if you're going to live forever. Where did you get that? Mahatma Gandhi, of course, Dad. So learn as if you're going to live forever. The learning never stops. And finally, believe in yourselves. Because as Mahatma Gandhi said, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits form your character, and your character determines your destiny. Good luck. All the very best. Thank you very much. Now declare the ceremony closed.